Hey guys, welcome to another video for Euden, Euden, Iuden. I was told it was pronounced Euden or something like that. Um, yeah, so I got to work on that pronunciation. But anyways, guys, just wanted to introduce some of the characters that were that were revealed, and this guy looks just like Tur Mc McDoll. Um, I think that's how you pronounce his last name. Um, he looks just like him, like the main character from Sudoku 1. Um, he has the same look, the same eyes, same hair, the side going. This was done by the same artist for Sudoku 1. The only difference, obviously, is are the weapons. It looks more like uh, Chinese type of uh, halberds. Um, so let's go back. Let's see. He's, uh, his name is no Noah or Noah. Um, he's 17 years old. Uh, he lives in a remote village in the League of Nations. So it kind of reminds me of Sudokan 2, the city-states. And you have all these, like, I think it was six or seven of them. I haven't played Sudokan 2 in a while. But you have, like, these states that were banned together against the Empire. So this reminds me a lot, like, the plot of Sudokan 2 in a mixture of Sudokan 1. And then his favorite food, anything with meat in it sounds like me I like anything that has meat in it and here is a short uh, biography of of himself um, you can read a little bit about him here when the Le League of Nations recruit warriors to assist in a joint expedition with the Gladian Empire our protagonist answers the call and leaves his remote village to test his skills so it seems like he is war ready and he likes to test his abilities he likes to fight so unlike the other guys from Sudokan 1 and 2, um, he actually likes to fight. The other guys were running away from that. Except for the Sudokan 1 main character. He was more like going on expeditions with uh, his friends, his father. But the Sudokan 2, he, was all, he also started in a, a youth um, brigade army. But this guy seems more war ready in my opinion. And don't be fooled guys. This is like Sudokan... This is like the Sudokan series in uh, sheep's clothing. It's like a wolf in a sheep's clothing. They just don't want to name a Sudokan because they can't. Konami owns it. it. says, um, okay, so on the mission he finds an ancient ruined lens. Unaware that the discovery will spark a war between the League and the Empire. So the states, states, quote, versus the Empire. After the conflict begins, he joins a unit in the League's border guard. Okay, so now that right there sounds like Sudokan 3. The, the guard, the mercenaries, and a little bit like Sudokan 2. So the protagonist is the leap before you look type. Leap before you look. So he acts before he thinks. Leap before you look. He doesn't, he doesn't always weigh the pros and the cons before springing to action. And while he constant needs to involve himself in other people's problems, sometimes creates headaches for his companions. They like him for it and know his heart is in the right place. After all, if they ever got into trouble, he'll be the first person there. That's who I am. A meddler. Always will be. So this guy is nosy as hell. He's nosy. He likes to stick his nose where it doesn't belong. He likes to help others. He likes to fight. So this guy, in my opinion, I think he's a little bit different than all the Sudokan protagonists that, we, that I know, know about. Maybe part five kind of reminds me of him. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just ask Lenin. Or Lenin. Lenin. I don't know. Uh, so don't tell me to do, to do nothing. I may be able to help them. But I have to at least try. So even when the odds are stacked against him. You can bet your ass. Noah. Noan. Noah. Uh, however you pronounce his name. Will go into battle. And no matter what. He's going to try to defend you. If it's none of his business, he's gonna listen, he's gonna be listening to your business. It does not matter to him. He's that nosy. So let's go to this guy, uh, Kelsing, Kison. Guys, I'm really bad at pronouncing names. Um, he's an 18 year old, a noble house in the Gladian Empire. He like he likes eggs. Okay. So let's see. So this guy obviously he's from the other side. He's not even from a remote. This guy's more like the silver spoon type. Uh, he has it all. He's rich probably. His family is rich. Oh, look at that. Yeah, he, he's definitely rich. The second born son to the house 
of Kilsing. Kilsling, a powerful imperial family. His older brother died on the battlefield. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, Sang, I'm going to call him Sang because I don't know how to pronounce his name, is exponentially gifted after achieving outstanding grades at the military academy. So this guy is a genius. He was placed in command of a company of peers and sent on the expedition to find the ancient ruinless lens. So it looks like him and the main character will meet face to face. Uh, during the mission, he meets the protagonist, just like I said. The two warn the two warm to each other as they overcome adversity and they learn of one another's ambition. It sounds like a love story. Um, <clears throat> okay, um, so sings, signs, reigns, I don't know. A uh, strategic mind allows him to analyze things from a broad perspective and make sound decisions. People often confuse his clear mind for a cold heart, but he is guided by the strong I ideals and a deep passion to fulfill them. After his brother's death during a border re rebellion, Sign began to think long and hard about what it means to fight. Okay, so ever since his brother died, this guy is like, screw war, I hate fighting, and maybe that's what led him to kind of befriend the protagonist instead of going to war with him. And here's a quote from him. I can dream all I want, but it won't change a thing. The world is not that kind. So if the only way to achieve my ideals is to betray them first, then I will do that. Unflinch, flinchling, ling, e, uh. <laughs> Anyways, um, you have my word. Um, okay, so we have the next character. She looks really cool. She looks really cool. I would definitely use her. Um, so let's see who. She, oh, let's go back down there. A young. Oh, what's her name? Sorry, Marissa. She's 16, one of the guardians who watches over the forest. Herbed chicken. Okay. A young member of the guardians, a clan that hollows and protects the forest. Sounds like that. It was like this, um, I forgot who they were. It, it was in Sudikin 2. It was like these guards. Oh, it sounds like an elf. That's what it sounds like. Like an elf. Yeah. Since Marissa was very little, her family has instilled their ways and traditions in her. She has a warm, she has a warm smile, except on the battlefield where she wears the, okay, so this girl is a killer on the battlefield, but when you're talking to her, she's not a killer, she's lovable. Um, how many characters do we have here? Oh, we have quite a few guys. Um, all right, so let's try to, uh, try to make it, try to make it condensed so I don't keep you guys here forever. All right, so let's see. Although the Guardians live as one with the forest, they have respect for the outside world's culture and technology. So her race and her people do not believe in cult, um don't don't believe in the outside technological world. They prefer the more of the natural nature, what the world gives them, what the forest gives them. They're not against, um, yeah. So pretty much says it right there. So Marita is uh, she's a fast forward she's a forward thinking in her regard she loves new things especially cute things so she's a cute lover and over the generations guardians have developed a unique method of wielding the ruin lenses and I'm I'm I want to know how these ruin lenses the, the how are they different from the ruins from the Sukunin series I want to know the differences between them then it says, for that reason, both the Empire and the protagonist try to win them over to their camp, whom Guardians choose will prove to be a major turning point in history. Alright, so it seems like these guys are... Oh, look at that, guys. If you look close to her hand, she has a ruin lens. A ruin lens. So it's kind of like the the runes in your hand, your forehead, your, your right and your left hand. She has a ruin lens right in her hand. That is cool. That is cool. Uh, you just leave the forest to me. I know where the water springs, where the rabbits burrow, and the most importantly, where your enemies will try to hide. Okay, we have an older guy finally here. He's 27, a scholar of natural history. He likes duck soup. That sounds gross, but it might be good. I don't know. A young scholar who specializes in natural history. He yearns to know of everything, every last thing in the world and exactly how it got there. 
He also happens to be a genius tactician, so this guy is kind of like at the Apples, the Silverbergs of the world. Um, that is his, that that said, he views warfare as a uh, most pointless of all human endeavors, and any personal con contributions to it as a complete waste of time. So this guy hates war. He's against it. He's he's brilliant. Um, and some of his quotes are, "You should lay down arms and surrender," because he prefers not to. Uh, spread bloodshed and then he says no very well then i suppose i'll provide you with the next best thing a winning strategy so we got here is the silverberg of the game that's what we have here if this is not if this is if this game does not scream sudiken series to you i don't know what will guys we got we got the um the runes you can see her her uh right hand we got a tactician we got two friends on the opposite side who meet. We got someone that looks like Tur. Um, I mean, guys, he even joins the damn border guards. I mean, this this is this is Sudikin at its best right here. And we even have a dog human, a beastman, a veteran. Oh, what is, I'm sorry, Gur, 32 year old warrior in a clan of mercenaries. Sealess pancake, slandered with whipped cream. Um, a veteran beast men warrior. He he and his clan make their living as mercenaries, and their vast experience, steer brutality, put them in a high demand. War is all Gur has known, and to him, life is life is one battlefield after the other until you die. So this guy, um, and Mel, I forgot to read his name. I'm sorry, Melridge. Melridge and Gur are the total opposite, and this guy looks badass. I would definitely have this guy on my team. He looks he looks he looks cool. This guy looks really cool. Really good design. Um, when a conflict breaks out, every army wants as many beastmen as they can afford. So it seems like the beastmen are like on the top of the market when you're when you're recruiting soldiers. These guys are tough. Um, because of the mercenary uh, contracts are made with individuals and not the entire clan, it is not uncommon for Gur and his fellow beastmen to face each other. To face each other as enemies in the field. Okay, that's interesting. So, to win the contract, these guys are willing to kill each other in battle. They don't care if you're brothers. Only a soft-brained leader runs headlong into danger. Anyone who knows what's good for him will tell you you've lost it, kid. Okay, let's see, guys. And then we have Lena, a 16-year-old female... Um, her home is a martial arts dojo, and her favorite foods are super spicy ramen. And this game has chefs, so if it's anything like Sudiken One, Sudiken Two actually had a really cool chef system. So if any, if it's anything like Sudiken Two, um, you can make any types of food, and then you have like this this iron chef type of uh, contestant type of game. Um, uh, this type of contest, I mean, where the contestants take place, and then you have these people voting, and they give, like, scores from 0 to 10, I think it was. Um, so, yeah, let's read a little bit about her. It says, after the Empire's forces invade League of League Islands, Lena is uh, infuturated and runs away from home without even the slightest semblance of a plan. She decides the first thing to do is hoof it. I don't even understand what that means. <laughs> she decides the first thing to do is hoof it to the biggest town she can find. And luckily, that's where she meets the protagonist and his companions. Okay, so it seems like she just runs away, bumps into the protagonist and the companions. She befriends them. Now she's part of the team. Lino was born in a dojo. Her father wasted no time in teaching her. So this girl is a badass at fighting. She'll kick your ass. Uh, she's doing roundhouse kicks before she even learned to walk properly. That is crazy. So before she even learned how to walk, meaning before she was even one years old, she was doing roundhouse kicks. That is insane. Uh, maybe I'm dumb. Oh, this is her talking. Uh, maybe I'm dumbing this down a little, but like if a bunch of ignorant swine stirs into your home, and started acting like they own the place what do you do because there's your answer so i'm assuming she meant when the league invaded her location um you know she was forced to run and then we have the last character that was revealed mio 27 year old 
27 year old from the far east so she's asian uh her favorite food is bamboo wrapped with sasa dumplings a swords a swordswoman who is journeying to perfect the ways of the blade she has a stoic personality and rarely speaks unless it's to challenge someone she views as she views as a worthy opponent so i wonder if they're going to have those cool duel mechanisms in this game because i miss those duels from sudiken 1 and 2 especially i miss sudiken 1's duel was the best those things always had my heart pumping um especially when we fought luca uh, blight that was intense um and then she says when she does open her mouth to say something it's straight to the point and usually dripping with wisdom so the people around her have taken taken to calling her sensei which means master however even even the greatest of senseis do not have the occasional brain fart the road you walk is one and yet its endpoints are married you can still choose where the road takes you okay guys so that, those are all the characters we have for this game thus far um and they, they seem very diverse they gave them they gave them personalities they really put a lot of thought into this I'm excited about this game. This game is like a mirror image of the Su Sudokan series. We even have the Ruin lenses, which is runes, pretty much. Um, this game, if you're going to support it, <clears throat> it opens up tomorrow. So here's the information. Uh, the game will have a Kickstarter campaign seeking half a million dollars, US dollars, for a PC release. And there will be a single stretch goal to unlock PS5. So right now, guys, um, they're only doing it for PC. But there's also a goal to unlock it for PS5, Xbox Series X, and Switch versions, or next-gen Switch. Um, if that is the case, it will run from July 27th at 9 a.m. till tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific Time. You can go ahead and pre-order. That's 12 p.m. Eastern. Uh, it says right there, 12 p.m. Eastern. Um, and this is going to last until August 28th. <clears throat> so in addition to a uh, trailer, we'll also debut at the time. Oh, so I'm assuming. Excuse me, guys. Sorry, I had to cough. So I'm assuming this part here says, in addition, a trailer will also debut at that time. So I wonder if the trailer will debut on the 28th or will it debut on the 27th tomorrow? We'll find out. We do have a game clip, a gameplay clip in the meantime, which you can see below. Here's a gameplay clip. Um, I just play right now, real quickly. Oh, sorry. Go on there. This game looks sick. Um, let's watch it in this horizontal mode as well. Yeah, so guys, I'm wondering if that right there... there is either a his special little painting stick that he has or is that part of the rune lens it's probably his painting little staff he has or paintbrush uh but yeah guys thank you for watching this video uh thank you for taking part of your day here or night or evening afternoon to watch me go over these characters um i do have a discord i'm gonna put it on the description below uh join up we already have quite a few people in there um and i'm dedicating it to this game and to suken series and other, every other rpg so if you use rpg maker if you make your own games just anything if you want to just chat with people join the discord um let's make it grow let's have a community where we can talk about the game where we can support the game and we can just be friends and talk to each other guys i'll keep i'll put that link below um like the video share comment subscribe i will make more videos the next one i'm going to make is probably talking about the ruinlands because i am curious to know how are these relatable to the 27 true ruins and all the other ruins because this is going to be the main theme of this series so let's hope that our great creator um lives a long healthy life because i want him to make so many here he is yoshikata murayama 
So let's hope him a healthy, you know, because there is the pandemic going around. Let's just hope he stays healthy um, and everybody else involved and all you guys as well. Hope everyone stays safe, healthy. Um, you know, I can't wait uh, to have this game in my hands. Just like you guys. Anyways, guys, join the Discord, like the video, subscribe. Take care. Thank you so much for watching.